back and bring back the bad year. Hope you're doing well. You know, once again, before we get started today, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button near the bottom of this video, near the title. Hit it. If you are subscribed, let your friends know. Let your family know. Let anyone you know know. Say, hey, you know, even copy the link at the top. You know, and, you know, share it with your friends, family, they put it on any social media you have. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever the kids are doing these days. You know, I'm giving you permission to let everyone know. Subscribe. And once again, also, if you like whatever we're talking about today, leave a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts, opinions about the topic we're talking about, and let's get started. So we have Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. This is the new Marvel movie, starting a Phase 5. Right. Um, this is the 31st, 31 Marvel movie. 31. We have now hit 31 Marvel movies. I mean, this is now the longest running franchise. In only about what 15 years. We're doing good. We're doing real good. Good. Real good. Um, now let me give you a little bit of a brief history with me and Ant Man. I really like the first Ant Man movie. I think it's very underrated. I think it had a lot of charm, a lot of humor. I thought Paul Rudd was fantastic in the role. I remember at the beginning, a lot of people were not happy that he got cast. They got Paul Rudd, the guy from like the 40 year old virgin, and he, our idiot b brother, and Clueless, and that Halloween movie that he is supposed to be, you know, Tommy, little Tommy all grown up. Uh, yeah, and I was like, yeah, Paul Rudd. Why not? I think if Ant Man's supposed to be more of a fun character, Paul Rudd would, would be perfect. Um, and I love that first, I, I really like that first Ant-Man movie, I think it's very underrated. The little girl, Cassie Lang, was so, the father-daughter relationship was so cute, adorable. The creative decisions that they did with that first movie, like the, the, the railroad train and the little girl's bedroom. Um, Corey Stoll as the villain, uh, like the Michael Douglas, Evangeline Lilly, like a very, very underrated Marvel movie. Now, the second one, Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm not a fan of. You know, when I first saw that movie, I remember walking out going, is it me or was I just born with that movie? I thought maybe the movie just came after Avengers Infinity War, that, you know, you go from Avengers Infinity War to Ant-Man and the Wasp, you know, and very much a Avengers, Ant-Man. I don't mean in the other small. Um, I don't know, I, I went back and watched it again a couple of years, like right before, um, like right before Endgame or a year after, I don't know. But, and I was like, no, this movie is just boring. I don't know why, the movie just never, to me is my, one of my least favorite Marvel movies, other than for the Eternals. And, it, and before the Eternals, it was my least favorite Marvel movie. So, going into Ant-Man 3, I was like, I don't know. We're going into the quantum realm. You know, we're expecting all this, we have a lot of expectations. You think we have a Doctor Strange 2 that didn't live up to the hype? I don't know. I don't know. And after Phase 4, uh, Marvel's been on a very rocky start, rocky road lately. Stumbling, a lot of, a lot of stumbling blocks in Phase 4. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, but now I can say I don't know. I actually did enjoy this one. I don't think it, it's not as good as the first one. I did enjoy it more than the second one. So let's get started. Positives. Paul Rudd. 
Paul Rudd knows how to bring that humor and charm. His relationship with his daughter, Cassie, is very good. I would say that's the heart of these Ant-Man movies. Even the second one, the best moments in the second one were between Scott Lang and Cassie Lang. So, Paul Rudd, and I like how this one, Paul Rudd, did have to be a little bit more serious than in the previous ones. Kind of like what we saw in Avengers and Endgame. You know, he had to show more of a serious side. So, at Paul Rudd, once again, nails the role. Catherine Newton this time replaces um, Amber, Amber something, who played the teenager Cassie Lang in Avengers Endgame. She had that one scene when Paul Rudd, Scott Lang comes home from being in the quantum realm for five years, goes home, sees his daughter as a teenager. They have that moment, great moment. And, I, and I, I'll admit, I'm a little bummed they didn't, they didn't bring back the, that actress. I mean, you spent all that time casting her, and then you don't bring her in for the Ant-Man 3. When, like I said, this movie got pushed back because of the pandemic. So, this movie was announced not long after Endgame came out. So, I don't know why you didn't just bring in the same actress. Either way, uh, Catherine Newton does a really good job here. I thought she was very good in the role. In fact, looking at her and looking at the younger Cassie, they do look similar. Um, and then you look at her mother, who was played by Judy Greer, they also have a similar resemblance. So I know the, you know, looking like the, the younger Cassie, plus looking at, like, the mom. Okay, they have a look. They have the look. I buy it. And I think Catherine did a great job, not only with Paul Rudd, he still had that heart and chemistry that worked with the father-daughter relationship. You also, he can be funny at moments, he can be emotional at moments, he can be serious in moments. And I thought Catherine Newton, her, her story with Modoc, I won't get into Modoc, but I enjoyed it. It worked for me. I'm not, we're just talking about the Cassie and Mona back and forth. I won't go into spoilers why it worked. And yeah, that would be a spoiler. Um, Jonathan Majors, he knocks it out of the park as Kang the Conqueror. This is going to be the new big bad of Phase 5 moving forward. He's going to be the new Thanos. And he definitely delivered. He is very scary at moments. He is a presence to be scared of. His acting is on excellent. He commands attention. I am very, very... This actor is about to have an amazing 2023. We're about to see him again in Creed 3. And then he also had a movie just come out of the Sundance, Sundance Film Festival that is getting rave reviews also. So this is going to be the year of Jonathan Majors. Um, and like I said, seeing what he's going to be doing in the next Avengers movie, Kang Dynasty, after seeing him in this movie, oh boy, I can't wait. Uh, the humor. Well, again, this is an Ant-Man movie. I remember when people were a little bit worried from the trailers that this is going to be a lot more serious movie, a more serious tone. But don't worry, there's still a lot of humor in this movie, and I really bought it. I think there's Marvel movies that have the serious moments and they cut they cut in with humor. This didn't do it like that, so I was okay with it. Plus I know this is Ant-Man and Ant-Man is more fun, more light-hearted. So I bought the humor. I think there's a lot of great moments. Especially with Cassie and Modoc. That got a lot of laughs in the theater. So I enjoyed the humor. Janet Van Dyne had a great story, a brat story with her dealing with the quantum realm. I won't get into it that because I once again don't want to spoil anything. But seeing Michelle Pfeiffer back, he really didn't have we always saw her briefly at the end of Ant Man and the Wasp. We didn't see her at all in in, in Endgame. I think maybe the funeral scene. Ooh. Um 
my way, you got Michelle Pfeiffer. Please, for the love of God, do something with her. This is Selena Kyle, Catwoman, from Batman Returns. Still one of the best performances, performances to ever play Catwoman. And I do like Zoe Kravitz, but still, Michelle Pfeiffer is Catwoman. Which, by the way, brief side note, we got that Flash trailer last week. And we got to see Michael Keaton back as the Batman. I really hope, now I don't want to see this in a trailer, but I really hope they have one scene with Michelle Pfeiffer back as Selena Kyle in the Catwoman outfit. Please. Please. Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer on screen for one scene. That's all I want. Make it happen. Did you make it happen? We'll find out in June. Anyway, getting back to Ant-Man. Um, the visuals. I know a lot of people are complaining about the visuals. You like, all oh, green screen. I mean, you're in the quantum realm. That's not, you know, that's not our world. So, but, you know, I didn't mind it. You know, it's like, hey, you watch the Star Wars prequels. Guess what? That was all green screen. Um, you know, I like the visuals. It worked for me. The pacing is a two-hour movie. It had a nice pace and got it right into it. And then it hang over and it, you know, Dilly Dally, if you will, right into the movie, right into the quantum realm, and we were off. Negative, 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 negative. Um, this movie is called Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Uh, and there's no offense to Evangeline Lily, the Wasp, the character of Wasp, Hope. He mainly has nothing to do in this movie. He's just there. This movie would have been better called Ant-Man and Peanut. Matt, why Peanut? Well, that's what Scott Lang calls his daughter. Like a nickname. Peanut. He's been saying it since the first Ant-Man. Because there's way more Ant-Man, Scott Lang, and Cassie Lang in this movie doing stuff. I would think about 85% of the movie is Scott Lang and Cassie Lang. So why would you call the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp? You should have called it Ant-Man and Cassie Lang. Ant-Man and Peanut. Ant-Man and give her a nick and give her a superhero name. Um, Ant-Man and Lady Ant-Man. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know what her name is in, in the comments. Um, here somebody knows. This is where this is where you can leave a comment. Uh, Star Wars. A lot of critics have compared this movie to Star Wars, and that is a very accurate is accurate. There is literally a moment in this movie that looks like it came out of one of the Star Wars prequels. I think there's two moments that I said, Disney, I know you have the rights to Star Wars now, but you really did your homework on the prequels. I mean, there are legit scenes in this movie, this Ant-Man movie, that are straight out of the prequels. Straight out. To the point of, if you don't notice them, you obviously have never watched a Star Wars movie before. Because guess what? It's that obvious. I was like, gee, you think that's from Star Wars? Um... When you, when I'm putting it in my negative because it reminded me of Star Wars while I'm trying to watch an Ant-Man movie. I mean, and that's it. Look, you went by the prequels. I enjoy the prequels. Well, you went by, but you got your imagery from the prequels. Come on. Action scenes. This is also an odd one. Because the action scenes in the first two Ant-Man movies were really good. But for some reason in this movie, I'm watching the movie going, A is way too choppy. The editing is just all over the place. You can't even tell what's going on half the time. 
and also not even close up, too close up. I know, I don't, don't even go there. Don't go there. But Matt, their aunt, you know, they, they shrink down a little, little nothing. Little, little nothing. You can't see them. Don't go there with me. I'm not talking about those moments. I'm not talking about when they're out there in their normal size and they're fighting. You can barely see what, you can barely tell what's going on. I'm not talking about when they're this small. I'm not a dumbass. Don't, no, don't go there with me. I'm not an idiot. I can just see someone going, Well, man, well, you know when they're this small. Shut up. I'm not going to get the spoilers. But the problem I have with Monarch is when we see Monarch and not the character, not the person that is Monarch. I like that, actually. I like that. I won't spoil it. But I can really like that and how it helped explore more of Cassie Lang's story. My problem is the visual. It, I'll admit, it's. Is like, really? Marvel? Disney? You are the same studio, right? Who does the Guardians of the Galaxy? Who makes a raccoon look believable? Who makes a fucking tree look believable? In visuals. We buy it. We like it. It looks real. You are in the same studio that gave us Thanos for almost two and a half hours of Thanos. And the visuals look great. He looks believable. Perfect visuals. And then we have Modoc. <laughs> and in the same studio, I know the visual effects department is had it up to here with Marvel, but come on. That's just sad. Sad, strange little man. Well, he is a little man. But that's a perfect line. Um, Eddie. How does the quantum realm work? In terms of time? Right? Right? The people that saw this movie? Are you, are you with me? I didn't realize it until the end of the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. Time. How does time work? Because back in the first Ant-Man, when, or by the end of the first, by the end of the second Ant-Man, when Janet Van Dyne came out, he was in there for like 30 years, and he was a lot older. Right? Now we don't know... And then when Scott Lang was in the quantum realm, when he came out, five years passed. But he was like, oh, it hasn't felt you know, that long. It's only felt like five minutes. It's only... Now, we don't know how long our characters were in the quantum realm by the end of the movie, minor spoiler, when some of the characters knew come back to Earth. But I would say it must be a certain amount of time, a couple of years maybe, Maybe. They were in there for a while. But, I think my, I think my spoiler right now. When we get back to Earth, everything is still the same. Nobody has changed. Nobody looks older. Nothing has happened to the world. I was expecting to get back to the quantum realm, get back to Earth, and maybe a variant of Kang has already started destroying Earth. That would have been like, oh shit, how long have it been? Are we too late? You know, or it's just been a couple of years, five or six years, and the people like the Bastion Roberts manager is now an old man. Or, you know, Kathy goes back home to see his mo her mom, which by the way, where's Judy Greer? Judy Greer is the mother playing the mother. And maybe the mom is now an older woman. Older. Old woman now. Well, right then, everything is still the same. So I'm like, how long were they in the quantum realm? And how did it work? You know, why did Janet Van Nine, Scott Lang, time passed on 
in our universe on Earth? No, I don't know. 3.9 out of 5. I think it's better than the second Ant-Man. Not as good as the first Ant-Man. I think I still enjoyed it. And like it's not a bad way to start Phase 5. I don't think it deserves the 45% on Rotten Tomatoes, the worst reviewed Marvel movie. No way. Eternals, Ant-Man 2, and Thor in the Dark World. Anybody? Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Gotta change that title. Ant-Man and the Wasp Mania. Let me know in the comments below, did you see this movie? What did you think? Do you want another Ant-Man movie?